SpongeBob SquarePants Mysteries Ooze in the Ocean. Chapter 15 Sometimes you chase the bad guys, sometimes they chase you. Those are the kind of moments when it's real nice to have a partner working with you. Unfortunately, I didn't have one, and I had no idea what Patrick, my former partner, was up to. For all I knew, he was back home in his easy chair watching TV and eating snacks, having left the dangerous world of detecting far behind. Brother, was I wrong? Patrick paced around his home, angry and frustrated. SpongeBob's got a lot of nerve telling me how to drive. He doesn't even have his license. Sure, I don't either, but that's just because mine expired and I forgot to renew it. I am an excellent driver. But even though Patrick felt confident about his driving ability, he wasn't nearly as sure about his detective skills. Had he blown it? Did he have what it took? He wasn't sure. They certainly hadn't solved the mystery. Was it all his fault? Then he got an idea. Maybe he couldn't tell whether he was a good private eye or not because Spongebob was always talking, taking the lead, bossing him around and telling him what to do. Maybe if he had a chance to do a little detecting all on his own, he'd really shine. Or maybe not. But he'd never know until he tried. Patrick stopped pacing around. He picked up his old raincoat and fedora hat from the floor and put them back on. Private Eye Patrick was back on the case. Now he just had to figure out where to go and what to do. He decided to go back to the place where the whole case had started, the J.D. Scholl's rest home. Maybe they'd missed something, like an important clue. If he could find a new piece of evidence, he could crack the whole case wide open. And SpongeBob would have to accept him as a legitimate detective. Patrick popped open his rock, jumped out, and practically ran all the way to the rest home. Back behind the building, someone had cleaned up the trail of green ooze. Miss Hullabut, the manager, had given the order, eager to put a stop to the residents' speculation about who had left the track of slime. She was also hoping to silence their threats to leave and move somewhere else. Patrick wandered around the backyard looking for clues, but whoever had cleaned up the ooze had given the yard a thorough cleaning. It was spick and span, not a clue in sight. He wondered if there had been any more suspicious activity at the rest home since he and Spongebob had been there last. He decided to go inside and ask around, and maybe check to see if the cafeteria was offering any free samples. Tipping his hat forward and tightening the belt around his raincoat, Patrick opened the door and headed inside. The place seemed much quieter than the last time he'd been there. Two residents passed by him carrying their baggage. Why are we moving out? The old lady fish asked. I thought they cleaned up the ooze. Oh, they cleaned it up, the old man fish growled. But they still don't know who put it there in the first place. They could come back any time. Now come on, until they figure this out, we're staying with the kids. Patrick spotted Merman, Patrick spotted Merman Man sitting by himself. <clears throat> his head was tilted back and his mouth hung open, fast asleep. He was snoring loudly. <sighs> hey, Mermaid Man! Patrick greeted his hero. Mermaid Man startled awake. <sniffs> huh? What? 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 Where am I? You're home, Patrick explained. In the Shady Shoals rest home. Oh, good! Mermaid Man said, smiling. I must have dozed off for a second there. Where's Barnacle Boy? Patrick asked, looking around. I think he's in the lounge reading, Mermaid Man said. We always spend an hour or so apart around this time of day. Give each other our space, but we always come back together. You do? Patrick asked, thinking of Spongebob. Of course, Mermaid Man said. Have a seat in the Merma chair. He patted the chair next to him, which looked just like all the other chairs in the room. Patrick sat down. We're a team. Partners. Have been ever since the days we were fighting evil. Patrick grinned and nodded. Yeah, you were the greatest he superheroes ever. Still are. Merman Man looked doubtful. 
Well, I don't know about that. We're not getting any younger, you know? We're semi-retired. In fact, Barnacle Boy says we're completely retired. The man of aquatic action looked around to see if anyone was listening and spoke confidentially behind his gloved hand. Just between you and me, I don't think Barnacle Boy trusts me to fight evil anymore. He's afraid I'll get hurt. He sighed. Oh, and he's probably right. Oh wait, well, but we still always stick together no matter what. That's what that's what partners do. But what if your partner makes you feel bad? Patrick asked. Like he insults your driving skills and makes you feel like you're not doing a good job. Merman chuckled. <laughs> oh, Barnacle Boy has criticized the way I drive the Invisible Mobile lots of times. But that's just natural. When you're chasing villains and solving crimes, there's a lot of attention. There sure is, Patrick agreed, thinking of his speedboat mobile ride with SpongeBob. The trick is to respect each other, even when you're feeling tense or nervous or angry or scared. Respect? Patrick asked. But what if your partner isn't showing you respect? Oh, especially when your partner isn't showing you respect. Merman explained. That's when you get busy respecting your partner like crazy. Soon he'll catch on and start respecting you back. Respect is kind of like a case of the sniffles. Very contagious. So is disrespect. If you respond to your partner's disrespect by disrespecting him back, it'll just get worse and worse until, before you know it, your partnership's broken. Patrick nodded, thinking about his broken partnership with SpongeBob. So your partnership's the most important thing? Merman shook his head violently. No! Stopping evil is the most important thing! Finding the truth! Solving the case! Catching the bad guys! Helping people! That's the most important thing! But it takes a partnership to do it! Evil is too hard to stop all by yourself! Patrick nodded slowly, thinking about Spongebob, their long friendship, their special bond, and are matching best friends forever rings. Yes, I see, he said. Well, in that case, if you'll excuse me, I think I'd better go find my partner. He started to walk away, then he stopped and turned back. Have there been any new developments in the case of the mysterious ooze? The who of the what now? Murmur Man asked, looking completely baffled. <laughs> oh, Murmur Man. You know, that weird green stuff? That with that weird green slime stuff that appeared behind the rest home in the middle of the night? Patrick explained. The situation SpongeBob and I are investigating together? Oh, that! Mama Man said. I haven't heard anything, but then my hearing isn't what it used to be. Smiling, he winked at Patrick. Well, if you were investigating this mystery, Mama Man, Patrick asked, what would you do next? Mama Man pursed his lips, thinking. And he smiled a white smile. I trust my instincts. Go on my gut. That's one thing about getting older. There's more and more gut to go with. <laughs> he chuckled and then fell back asleep. In seconds, he was snoring loudly again. <sighs> Patrick tiptoed out, leaving him to his nap. He decided to skip the cafeteria. Once he was outside, Patrick was determined to find SpongeBob. He was sure his partner was on the case, but where? He wasn't back at the Shady Shoals rest home, and somehow he didn't think SpongeBob would have gone back to Squilliam's mansion. He'd already been there twice. Patrick decided to take Merman's advice and trust his instincts. What does my gut tell me besides feed me, I mean? Suddenly, he got a very strong feeling, and it wasn't hunger. He was pretty sure he knew where SpongeBob had gone, Patrick started running toward the city limits. SpongeBob didn't know how much longer he could run through the dark tunnel. His legs were starting to feel wobbly, like overcooked spaghetti. His muscles were burning, and he was gasping for breath. <laughs> but the Alaskan form was still chasing him, roaring. Roar! He got an idea. Still running, he clicked his flashlight to, to its highest setting and he shone it back behind him, waving it around, trying to shine it right in the huge, warm, small black eyes. He couldn't aim the bright beam in both eyes at once, into both eyes at once. 
but he managed to get it directly in the monster's left eye. Roar! The monster stopped. The, the worm stopped, half blinded by the intense light. It coiled back, retreating from the flashlight's dazzling beam, and it lurched forward again. But the worm's brief hesitation had given SpongeBob a chance to sprint forward, putting a putting just a little more distance between himself and the beast. Just ahead, he spotted the circle of light on the ground. He was almost at the tunnel's entrance. The sturdy rope SpongeBob had tied to the coral up above was still dangling down to the floor of the shaft. Using his last ounce of strength, SpongeBob flung himself at it, grabbing the coral with both hands. He tried to pull himself up and climb to safety, but he couldn't do it. After his sprint down the tunnel, he didn't have the energy to hold himself up. The Alaskan boom was getting closer. He tried shining his flashlight in its eye again, but it ducked and continued on, having learned that the light was harmless. Troubling with fear, SpongeBob closed his eyes, waiting for the worm to mercilessly crunch him with its deadly teeth. <coughs> SpongeBob? Patrick! Who was calling down from above? Yes, Patrick, I'm here! And so is the worm! Stay tuned for chapter 16, coming up soon.